Are your tissue cultures looking pale, weak, or just not growing the way they should? One of the most overlooked but most important part of any tissue culture setup is the lighting. Without the right kind of light, even the best media and the cleanest techniques won't give you strong, healthy growth. Your cultures might survive, but they won't thrive. Too dim, too intense, a wrong color spectrum, and you're holding back your success before it even starts. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Pang, and today I'm going to be showing you how to install a lighting system for your lab using a T5 LED like this. And I will show you the exact setup I'm using. It's simple, clean, affordable, and it works. We'll go over everything, what type of light I use, how much light you actually need, and how to install it step by step, how to connect, especially using the daisy chain method. So let's get started. Firstly, let's talk about Kelvin. So what Kelvin is, it is actually the color temperature of the light. Lower Kelvin, like 2700 Kelvin, will look warm yellow like a lamp in your bedroom. And like, okay, 6000 to 6500, it's gonna look like a daylight. So that's what you want. And um, anything beyond that is not good. So I recommend 6000 to 6500. In this case, I'm using 6500, which is great. Another reason I love these is because they don't drive your electricity bill nuts. These are, I, I suppose they are only like a few watts. They're only 9.6 watts per, per lamp, so that's not much. And these are very effective and they don't dissipate that much heat. So I suggest you use T5 or if you can't find the T5, you can also use the T8. But I really recommend T5. Like the T8s are... I believe are harder to find and I believe they're bulkier. So I I really I really do think that you should get the T5. So which brand, I don't know, like buy whatever brands is available in your country. But in this case I'm using LED vans here. The rating is here. And yeah, they look they they work fine. That's that's it for Kelvin. Now let's talk about how much light your plant needs. You can measure that using PPFD. PPFD stands for Photosynthetic Photon Flux Density. Wow, that's quite a big word. So for tissue culture, you don't need super intense light. Um, just around 40 to 80 micromoles per square meter per second. Now it's time to do a little calculation. I promise it's not going to be hard. So the power is 9.6 watts. This is stated on my light box. And the efficacy is 100 lumen per watts which means if I want to know the lumens, I have to multiply 9.6 watts by 100 lumen per watts that makes this LED 960 lumen. And it says that the beam angle is 155 degree, which will be a useful information for later. And this is the distance between my jars and my light. It's going to be around 0.3 meters. And the area of my shelf is 40 centimeters divided by 100 centimeters. And now that we got all the information, I'm going to input this into the website and I will provide this below. So my LED beam angle is 155 and the distance is 0.3 meters. And the light is 960 lumen, which makes it 2167 lux. Now proceeding to the next website, I'll change here to cool white spectrum. And then the lux is 2167. Press calculate and that's equal to 30.96 micromoles per meter square per second. As I've mentioned, the PPFD should be around 40 to 80 micromoles per meter square per second. In this case, it is 30.9, so I'll say it's roughly around 30. Therefore, I will need two of the T5 LED to make it around 60 micromoles per meter square per second. This is me showing you the old rack. I didn't use the daisy chain method, but today I will be showing you the daisy chain method because it is much simpler. So let's follow along. Now it's connection time. This is my timer. I got it from uh, something similar to Amazon where I live and you can set programs in these Monday so it says here Monday Tuesday Wednesday Thursday Friday Saturday Sunday so that's when it's on 5 a.m. and it's off at around 11 p.m. 
So that's all I have to do for my timer. I don't know what's available in your country, but you can use any kind of timer. And there's another one uh, that I recommend. It, it's going to look a bit analog, but this one is a digital version and normally it doesn't last long, but I got lucky with this one. It lasted me for like two years already. And this is a Chinese timer. And it says here, max 2,300 watts, but I wouldn't really trust the ratings. And that's what I use. So basically I connect these to this pre-made switch here. Sorry for my hand, I got bug bite. And it looked nasty. Here, it is pre-made. So this is a switch. And then on the end of this, I can connect this directly to my light. So I can connect it here. And then I can connect this here. And I just plug this to my wall and then it works. So that's pretty much it. Now let's talk about the daisy chain. So as I told you, this is where I plug in my first plug from the timer and the switch is here so I can put it, turn it on and off. Let's talk about daisy chaining. Daisy chaining just means connecting one device to another in a series, kind of like holding hands in a line. Imagine you have several LED grow lights. Instead of plugging each light into its own outlet, you plug the first light into the wall and then connect the second light to the first one. And then maybe the third one to the second one and all in one chain. This saves outlet space and makes your setup looks cleaner. But remember, most devices can only handle so much power. So always check how many you can safely daisy chain together or you might trip a breaker or damage your gear. Now let me show you with my connections. Everything in series. So in here, out, and then I got these cables for free. It's provided from the LED box I got. So I plug it in here at this end, and then I plug in this another end, and then it goes out here, and then another end here. And then when the loops ends, you basically leave the wire empty here. So no more connections here. It's time to attach your LED light to the shelf. I am going to use three of the grow light. It is going to be a little bit higher than what is recommended, but it's all right. And I'm going to attach it to my shelf using double-sided tape because I'm lazy and it works fine. Just like that. Then I will connect it to the socket and to the timer and it works just fine. Now that the lights are set up, it's time to move the culture onto the shelf. And just like that, the shelf is ready to go, it's clean, organized, and the light is finally dialed in. So now that is all you need to know about the lighting of the lab. Now it's all about getting started. If you find this video helpful, leave a comment, um, subscribe if you can, that will be very helpful. Or if you have any questions or any recommendations for the video, please leave it down below. And also I will be releasing my ebook soon, so stay tuned. Bye.